we have we've come to see a farmer who is doing exceptionally well in livestock keeping. You know, history tells us that uh, cattle or livestock keeping is a preserve of men. But there are some some women among us that, who are defying the odds and they have taken the bulls by its horns. They are changing the narrative of livestock keeping. So we have here today a farmer who is going to introduce herself and tell us about the story on how they've been keeping livestock. I'm sure from this story you'll be able to learn a lot and you'll be inspired, just like I'm inspired. And remember, this program is all about iron sharpening iron. So madam, please tell us more about yourself. Thank you very much, Dr. Bandi. Well, I'm Mrs. Machindu, a widow. I've got four children, one gentleman and three ladies. But right now on the farm, I'm living with my daughter, who is helping me since I lost my husband. We got the farm in 1992, and it was just land, there was nothing at all. We started collecting animals in 1987. We started with 30 animals, which we bought from the local farmers in Joseph's. My daughter decided to leave her employment to have to Well, since I moved on the farm, I think and I believe one can make it and can earn a living through farming. Farming is not only gardening, you can even bring in a lot of things like tourism. Right now we have animals, we have cattle and we have goats and sheep, which we put in the feedlot. After they grow the size that we want to slaughter, then we sell them to some beef, more beef, and other abattoirs around. What are some of the challenges that you face as a female or manager of the farm? Um, some of the challenges I would say are some of them are culturally based and some of them are just gender based. Um, when it comes to the workers, because of the foundation that was left by Some of them are still reluctant because some of them are younger then. So there's that issue. Then gender-based, it's in the beginning it was very tricky to be taken seriously. There were a lot of unnecessary advances when I'm just trying to do my job from different people from different areas. But now that every now that the dust has settled. Just a matter of being very firm. Okay. Yeah, for okay. workers and the people that I do. Okay. My husband had a great vision for the farm. Mm -hmm. And my prayer is we don't lose that vision okay. with my children. I'm blessed of God, very hard working children who are really supportive. His vision was to reach a very successful commercial farmer. When he was alive, he used to visit a lot of commercial farmers. He visited Alex, uh, Alex Hill and uh, Van Berg. Those are big farmers around Colombo, and he learned a lot. That's where, that's where he learned how to keep the bulls, so that when bulling time comes, a bull doesn't miss. His his vision was to make sure the bulls produce at least 80-95% every season and that he managed to do that. Uh, we want to go heavy into meat processing.
can uh, add value to the to the livestock that we are keeping on the farm. If we be able to purchase the equipment that we need to be processing the meat, it will be very, very helpful. And I'm hoping, and my prayer is to reach that stage to start processing what I'm on the farm. Because when you start adding value to your products, you expect to get more than just selling raw materials. So that is very that would be very important and that thing has potential to transform the way it, it has the potential to transform the margins that you are currently getting. Because out of one animal you'll be able to get even four times. Being a woman, we know that livestock is dominated by men. But you you started defining that. How have you managed as a lady so that uh, we encourage other ladies out there also that they too can do it? Well, uh, I think what has helped me is that I'm a very good uh, working team and then the veterinary department around Kalomo, they've been very helpful. Whenever I have got a problem, I go to them and they advise where I can do whatever I can and they also come in to do what they can do here with and they feel very helpful. Uh, on top of that, my husband left a very good with the farmers around because even the farmers around, they've never left me because I'm a mm. And one thing I also don't want to be self pity to say I'm a widow so everything should be done by someone. I, I think my husband that he made sure that I learned most of the things that he was doing. Because I knew when an animal is not feeling well, you must tell that this animal is not well. You do need to do something. An animal that doesn't just drop, it shows some signs that it's not feeling well and it's up to you to decide. Changes that you be you've encountered. Of course, everything has got its own challenges. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, mostly, it's the access to finance, financing institutions. Mm -hmm. If only they can reduce the interest rates, that will enable a farmer to get the finances that one needs to really work what you want to do in farming. Because, you know, farming, it involves a lot of chemicals, and chemicals are not cheap. Especially now that the prices are changing every day. You go today, you find a bottle of height that was at 165. Tomorrow when I go, I'll find it at 350. It's very difficult to work like that if you have got no money. And then if the government can help us to bring in maybe some way of uh, lending us the money which we can pay as we go because sometimes I may borrow the money to say okay I want to put my animals in the feedlot I need to buy the feed I need to buy the chemicals for dipping I need to buy a lot of other things to for my program to work out well but then if the government maybe gives me money to say you have to pay in two months time suppose that program has not worked as I pro as I intended it to do. Where do I get the money? They should give us some some sort of an incentive. Yes, yeah, some sort of an incentive where we can be borrowing the money and we pay as we are able to. Has the business been profitable? Well, the business. Has been has been profitable from where we started from, except the last year when we started with this COVID thing. It has been a bit difficult, and then there was a time when the uh, the province was attacked with food and mouth, which really also brought us down. That also needs to be looked into by government because sometimes animals just move anywhere. And then these animals, some of them, especially the ones in communities, 
they are not vaccinated, they are not dipped, or maybe they dip, but then the chemicals they use in their dip bags is not working well, or they don't mix they don't well. Do, yeah, they yes, do. they're not doing the right thing. As a result, the food and mouth moves from those areas to our farms, which are already secure. Yes. yes. So we need uh, a system where they can be helping us from these uh, diseases, which is especially now when we have foot and mouth. Okay. And then from your, you said you have pigs. Yes, we have pigs. sheep, goats, and uh, cattle. So out of this, I know they are different, but uh, which one would you say this is your milk? Uh, this is your bread and, bread and butter. I know it's very difficult to compare, but in terms of liquidity, which one is giving you more liquid faster than any other? Okay, the pigs, they give us uh, money faster than the cattle. Mm -hmm. Because usually the cattle, it, take time. it takes a bit maybe. Uh, for a cattle to start producing maybe two years, Produces, then you put it in the feedlot, you feed it, and then you sell. But for a pig, once a, a pig gives birth, maybe 10, 14 uh, piglets, those it only takes six months, you have to sell. Okay. Yes. So I can say the pigs are giving us. With the goats, goats as well, they do give us money, but then if only we can have the access of exporting the goat meat, it will give us more money. Because right now we are depending on these people who are going to Kasumbalesa. And when they come, these Kasumbalesa people, they will tell you, no, animals, they would want to negotiate for a very cheap price. Right. And mm. then you give them. Mm. But then they are going to make more. Mm -hmm. As a result, as a farmer, I'm losing them there. Okay. Meaning. What word of encouragement do you have to fellow women? In the industry. I think my encouragement is as women let us stand up and pick up this uh, in this industry where we think the, it's only for men. It's not only for men, even a woman can do it. Because it's only if you have the knowledge of what you want to do, then you can have a lot of men who will help you to do that what you want to achieve. And again, in farming, there's a lot of money. Right now, we are in the days of COVID. Mm -hmm. Even if we're in the, in the COVID era, everybody wants to eat. We will not stop eating, we have to eat. So who will provide that food? That food? It's the farmer. So if we come in, we, a lot of us come into farming, we'll find that our country will develop and we will not be depending on an orange from South Africa, beef from where, we just have to produce it here in Zambia. There is nothing hard into farming, we can all do it.